Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Enjoying God Through His Judgments. Well, you need to think of life like uh, bridal training through an evil and suffering world. God trying to select some brides and refine some brides through a very evil and suffering world. It's like if you don't choose God, you choose Satan. It's like the Garden of Eden story. Most people on earth are choosing Satan rather than God, making a very wicked world to live in. Some people are choosing God, not Satan, and are trying to be the brides of Christ through this wicked world we're living in today. Like it says in Isaiah, God says, I will punish the world for its evil. Like God was trying to say to Noah, I have to punish the world for its evil now. So when you think about enjoying God through his judgments, you kind of think of something like a happy Noah on the ark with God and letting God punish the wicked in his right time and his right way. And you have to think of it as something good. God doesn't have to save anybody, but he chooses to save a few people, like Jesus said, a few enter the kingdom of heaven. Most people go down the broad road of destruction to hell. We have to understand this is God's best for us. If God didn't punish people in the days of Noah, we wouldn't be alive today. Jesus wouldn't have came and died on a cross. The wicked people would have murdered each other. If it's not for God holding back the judgment, or the wickedness on earth, everybody just kills each other. They just turn to Satan and everybody, everybody wants to be the king of the world at the same time. They all destroy themselves. So that's what we see in the wicked as people without consciences, people with demonically mentally ill minds and uh, destroying each other and God trying to help you to handle it all as his bride through it. So, God decided to punish wicked people severely about over 70 years ago with World War II. Maybe some people came to their senses, had a little fear of God after that, but then they sort of lost it over the last 70, over 70 years since World War II since. It's like they're ready for World War III punishment now, or um, Days of Noah Part Two. Or Nazi Germany part two. It's like Satan likes to act like Hitler. And uh, God lets Satan punish wicked people. He uses the wicked governments to punish the wicked. And like it says in Romans 13, that God's using the government to punish the wicked and help the righteous out through it. It's a very wicked world. God has to work with wicked people and righteous people and control it all and bring it out for the good of his people. And the unbiblical churches don't create any buffer for this judgment. It's like uh, God laid down in the Bible how he wanted church done like the book of Acts. and. His church has not chosen to obey him very much to do that, so it doesn't really uh, be assault in the world or turn back evil. It just, uh, the more unbiblical the church gets, the sooner the judgment on the wicked happens. So we got a big judgment coming like World War Three or Days of Noah Part Two. And uh, there'll be a great apostasy in the church. There's a lot of false prophets out there saying that uh, God's going to make the world great again or something. <laughs> when people are just so wicked today, it's like, uh, I call it wicked land. And uh, you can be happy in wicked land. Noah was happy in wicked land. <laughs> the Bible says we're supposed to rejoice always. Regardless how wicked it is, regardless of how serious God's judgment comes down on the wicked people, it's like you can dance with Jesus on the ark or something when everybody's drowning, when everybody's being punished. It's like Paul singing praises when they're, he's in prison. And uh, understanding that God's grace is enough to 
vicarious through it. It's like uh, my safe haven is Jesus. <laughs> my ark is Jesus to be in. So we can look back at the days of Noah, the days of Jeremiah, or the tribulation and revelation to come, and it's God dealing with wicked people again. And we're just ripe for that now, and uh, God's trying to prepare us for it now. If we'll listen to what his voice is saying, we'll be ready for it. It's about developing a really strong relationship with God, understanding he has to punish the wicked, understanding he can help you through it like Noah on the ark when everybody else is being punished. It's like when people became wicked in the days of Jeremiah, they had to be taken into slavery to Babylon. God uses wicked governments to punish wicked people. He also helps the righteous out in the wicked land like Daniel and Babylon or Joseph in Egypt. And like Joseph went through a lot of suffering in his life, but he was able to say that they meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. God has made me to forget all the sufferings in wicked Egypt. So we have the supernatural power to have comfort, to have joy, to have peace in the midst of a very wicked world with Satan trying to control it. But God's in control of Satan. And uh, God wants us to live in a difficult world, but there's nothing too difficult for him to do for us. If we needed protection, he can give us protection. It's like at the Red Sea. There's an enemy army of Egyptians chasing Moses and the children of Israel, but God delivers them out of it. It's like uh, God fed them for 40 years in the desert. <laughs> God's got a sack of gold coins that never runs out. God, you could have a widow's jar that never runs out of food. When you just do what God's telling you to do. You just do your best and let God do the miraculous rest. That uh, he doesn't want us fearing any of this stuff. All this trouble should bring us closer to our perfect husband Jesus, or our perfect father God, and see his miraculous work done. Not to fear this stuff. Satan's like our Goliath or something. He's always trying to destroy us. Destroy our relationship with God and our faith in God. And we've got to fight back with God's word of truth, his sword, to defeat the devil. Because if we don't defeat the devil, he'll defeat us. It's like God says that the curses on the wicked in Deuteronomy are stuff like slavery, demonic mental illness. Wars, death. What Jesus says the future looks like is wars and rumors of wars and natural disasters. So we've got to understand God's in full control of all of this. We've got a perfect father in full control, perfect husband Jesus in full control. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and he directs it wherever he wills. Man may make his plans, but the Lord directs the steps. And in God's presence is a fullness of joy. If you can have perfect peace, trusting in God. So we got this problem in our life where maybe we were trained up to trust in ourselves rather than God. Our parents didn't teach us to trust in God. But we can learn to do that now if we want. And we got to break those old habits of trusting in ourselves. We're not going to be able to handle World War Three or Days of Noah Part Two or Tribulation and Revelation by ourselves. But with God's help, too, we can. It's like I got this motto, something like, uh, I call it my faith meditation. I got to live in an evil and suffering world, but God can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, make me happy in it, help me not to be bothered by it. That you just got to say that do your best, let God do the miraculous rest. We need to believe God's in full control. His hand is on the thermostat of my suffering. Now, Satan may be putting things on me like sickness or tiredness or uh, thoughts about you can't trust God or something, but you doubt or whatever, and you got to fight that off. You got to be in the Word. You got to believe what God says. Put your faith in what God's Word says, not what Satan's voice is trying to say in your mind or the world is trying to say in your mind or something that uh, Christianity ain't true. It's just a fairy tale. It doesn't work. And believe that it's real. Everything I see in the Bible happens in the world around me. God says there's fullness of joy in His presence. I experience it. He says there's perfect peace, trusting in Him. I experience it. 
He says he has to punish the wicked severely sometimes in history at the right time in the right way. I believe it. So I can, this is my way of enjoying God in his judgments. We, we, we don't need a good world to feel good. We need a good God to feel good. We need hope of heaven to come to feel good. That this is all God's plan. I didn't choose to make myself and live in 2018. God chose to do this. And I've just tried to do what his voice is telling me to do. And now and in the future too, when things get more difficult. Just like God spoke to Noah, he could speak to us. Now, if uh, God's trying to prepare us for these judgments coming, we need to listen to his voice and get ready for them. It's like he's trying to, if he says move, move. If he says stay, stay. If he says stock up on some food and water, stock up on some food and water. If he says don't stock up on some food and water, don't stock up on some food and water, there's nothing too difficult for him to do. And he can fill you with joy, and he can fill you with peace, and he can fill you with love. <laughs> so that's a bit about enjoying God through his judgments. <laughs>